Hello there. A few days ago I received a warranty replacement for the ZTTO 1150 I repaired a few days ago and that's because that cassette damaged or got damaged during use. And this is the cassette I received. It's a 1152, 11 speed. And with this one and the repaired ZTTO 1150 there is also another cassette you already saw, the 1140 11 speed by Shimano. So I now have three cassettes with a massive range. So I think it is a good opportunity to try uh, to check compatibility with different derailers. So I'm going to do just that. I have three cassettes and I have four derailers I intend to try. Uh, the three cassettes are this monster, 700 grams. Uh, the ZTTO 1150, which is 650 grams and... Why do I state the weight? It's irrelevant. And the 1140 by Shimano, which... Irrelevant, the weight is irrelevant. And the 1140 by Shimano. I'm going to try the Sensa SRX uh, rear derailleur. I'm going to try a Shimano Dior RDM6000 GS. And I'm going to try a Shimano XT... Uh, RDM8000 and uh, just to confirm that the previous 10 speed derailers don't really work with uh, those sets I'm going to try to use a Z but I don't think I'm going to be successful with it also I have uh, the cage extender not cage, hanger I have a hanger extender so I'm going to try to make things compatible with those cassettes with the hanger extender as well and I don't think I'm going to try all 12, 24 combinations because this video would be approximately 5,000 hours long and no one has time for that. So I'm going to try the most poignant combinations there are. So let's start. Okay, let's start with something I already have installed. So this is the Zensa SRX derailleur. This is my 30 tooth chain rings. 1150 cassette. This is uh, the ZTTO unit you already know because that's what I've been presenting, showcasing on the channel for the last few months. The chain stay length on this bicycle is 435 millimeters. So let's run it through all the gears. I'm starting with the tallest gear, uh, obviously, going to end in the lowest end of gear. And now you can see the first problem here. I already using I'm already using the hanger extender, just to note. This derailleur at this point is maxed, and since this is a full suspension bike, there's going to be a chainstay growth once it goes through travel. So this derailleur is not really capable of handling this 1150 cassette. So the seller well, essentially lied to me because this derailleur won't work. It needs a longer cage. Now, of course, if we run down the block, you'll notice that I have a little mm, space here, but if I add two links to the chain, I already have it rub rubbing here, so I'm afraid that the seller really lied to me. I don't know whether they he did it intentionally or not, but this derailleur is not capable of handling 1150 cassette unless you are running it on a uh, hardtail. But for the sake of completeness, let's try the same thing without the cage extender, the hanger extender. Alright, so I removed the extender. Here you go. So let's try this out. You already noticed that, as I said before, this derailleur simply doesn't have the capacity to handle 1150 cassette because I had to max out the uh, B, uh, B distance screw here. And it, even then it barely manages to go through. So most likely if I try to 1152 it, wouldn't, it simply wouldn't fit in the, in the space below the guide pulley. And, as you can possibly hear in the footage, when riding on the biggest cog, you hear that 
very specific sound when the guide puller is riding on the top of the biggest cover. Let's go down the cassette and this is the point when this derailleur simply stops working correctly. You can already see that the angle of approach shut up rear hub the angle of the approach of the chain is almost vertical here and if I go further down the block it goes even more into silly land. Note that the that the uh, extender of the cage of the hanger. Why I keep saying extender of the cage? The hanger extender actually made the B distance between the guide pulley and the smallest cog uh, better because uh, it allowed uh, the derailleur to wrap around the hanger more. So it actually made things better, which is kind of surprising for me because. I always assumed that they are actually lowering the quality of shifting. Note, I'm not at the minimum amount of chain, but because the B uh, regulation, B adjustment is fully backed in, I can't really get the derailleur to back out even further, and that doesn't really help at all, so... No. I have to say to Mr. Chinaman, who sold me the derailleur, it's not compatible with 1150, and God forbid, it's not compatible with 1152. It neither has the capacity, nor the ability to climb such a massive cassette. Alright then, so I installed the 1152. It's actually the first time this cassette is going to see the chain, and already this is a chain that saw a winter in it, so it's pretty worn out. Anyway, 1152, the, the hanger extender is installed. This is the minimum amount of chain this derailleur actually can handle. And I will show you that if I back out the, the B tension a little bit, it's already getting loose to a point of almost sagging. Oh, here you see. There's no tension here. Ah, okay. So, let's try this thing out. And here you can see that this derailleur truly isn't capable of handling 1152 range because this is the this is derailleur torture. If I tried to ride this bike, it would snap immediately. I almost didn't manage to get it to the biggest cog here. Derailleur is almost incapable of getting to such a low gear. So, truly, Mr. Chinaman sold me this derailleur. Not that I was expecting it, but this derailleur simply isn't capable of handling 1152 cassette. So, the verdict is that the Sensa SRX truly tops out at 1146 most likely. And, in, and without the hanger extender, I would probably do, won't go above 11.42 and this derailleur really, really seems like something that was designed with that in mind. Now I'm going to switch bikes and try some Shimano stuff on a completely different machine. However, before I go to the other bike, for the sake of reference, this is the cassette that I've been using this derailleur through the entire winter. That's an 11.40 by Shimano. I managed to shorten the chain by several lengths, you can see here they are. You can see that the B distance between the smallest cog and the guide puller is very sensible now instead of being massive. I'm even using the cage extender, the hanger extender. I probably shouldn't be, but who cares. 
Get another the C. How nice. Leave this trailer hand on this cassette. That's because, in spite of all the Chinese sellers I wanted to convince us of, this derailleur was meant for 1142 or 1140, possibly 1136 as well. 1150 is simply out of its range. 1146, possibly, but I wouldn't try to use it, use it on anything wider than that. So now let's move to the other bike. But, before we go to the other bike, let's for the sake of satisfying my curiosity, check Shimano Z. Note that I am using the sensor shifter, so it's most likely not going to work correctly. However, that's not the point here. The point is, can you use a Z, this is the ZFR, with a hanger extender to handle the 1140 cassette? You can already kind of expect that you can't because the B distance here is massive so the shifting to the highest gears is going to be rather <sighs> unimpressive. So let's try to go up the block. I mean shifting is very hard but you can expect this from a short cage derailleur with a clutch. So, there's a ton of chain drag here. However, there is still a, a bit of capacity here. So, I don't know, maybe on a hard tail you could try this. I wouldn't recommend this 1140 setup on a, uh, on a full suspension bike because this derailleur simply doesn't have the capacity to handle the chain stay growth during compression. However, on a hardtail, this looks like something that could work. Okay, now, this is the second bike. This is my wife's hardtail. The, the chain stay length here is 430 millimeters. So, not much different from the previous bike. The cassette is 1152 uh, ZTTO. Uh, the rear driller is a Shimano, I, Shimano XT RD8000GS. Uh, the front chain ring is 38 tooth and we're shifting with an SLX uh, shifter. So, let's check this out. You can already note that I'm not using the hanger extender. And in spite of this derailleur not being really rated for such a massive range cassette, it's handling it pretty gracefully. There is a slight delay when dropping to the 11 tooth, but not too much. The only thing that's a bit worrisome is the B distance between the 11 and the, and the guide pulley, or the il entire bottom of the cassette and the guide pulley, but that's nothing major. This is pretty good. So, let's try with the hanger extender. Okay, so I installed the hanger extender. Now I remember how it's called. So let's run it through the gears. A forewarning, many interesting things now happen, so watch closely. You can already see the shifting is a bit lazier. But it still shifts. However, the cage, the cage here is extended more than previously, and the B gap here is much bigger. And the problem here is that I can't really adjust it. Here you see, the shifting is much lazier because the B gap has increased significantly. Now. Watch what happens if I adjust the B-gap to be within the parameters 
Shimano recommends, which I think are about 10 millimeters. So, watch this. Downshifting is better now, obviously. The big up has been, has been lowered. However, at about this point, the derailleur loses its ability to tension the chain, which means that in case of the sensor, the extender allowed it to climb this massive cassette with a mixed result, but it did. However, of the XT, this is complete failure. This is not operable. So, in case of the XT, using the, the extender actually makes things worse. So, now let's try the 1150. Okay, after a few adjustments, this is the 1150. And you will already note that it actually works much worse than the 1152. There are two reasons for this. One, this is fairly worn cassette. And I, I am fairly sure that my repairs didn't really help. And two, it has different sequencing than the 1152. It, uh, this one has sequencing, which is the sequence of differences between all the cogs, much closer to what you would expect from a cassette, which is they get progressively bigger. While the 1152 has most, oh, you can see. While the 1152 has most of the cogs in four tooth spacing and this shadow derailleur, the single pivot design, uh, is much better at tracking cassettes that follow the straight path. So the 1152 is much better at following the con uh, at being followed by this derailleur than a 1150. Okay, so I replaced the derailleur, this one, with this one. And the reason for this is that those derailleurs are very similar. However, the Dior has a touch longer cage, which means that at least principally it should handle the higher gr range of the cassette better. So let's run it through the gears. Not perfect adjustment, sorry. That weird noise you're hearing is the friction in the in the clutch. And that's because I used it on a mountain bike, so I had the clutch set to really hard. But for my wife I'll have to adjust it to something lighter. But as you can see it handles the because of great. I'd say that it's even better than with the XT, so I think this is going to be the final uh, resting place for this derailleur. Although knowing myself, I'd probably change 20 things before that happens, so... So there you have it. I tried a few combinations of a derailleur and bicycle and a cassette. And I showed you uh, one very important thing. If you are expecting something that works like a native 12-speed high-range drivetrain, you probably should look for a ex uh, for a dedicated 12-speed uh, uh, wide-range drivetrain, such as Eagle, one of those Sunrays uh, 1150 or 12, 1050 uh, drivetrains, or to a new XTR. And obviously, as time goes on, we are going to see more of those uh, drivetrains being available. Because while the um, somewhat hacked solution with the Shimano uh, derailleurs worked somewhat reliably, uh, none of them really work without an issue. You could see that uh, even in the best scenario there were, ca there were situations where the downshifts or upshifts were kind of lazy, so I don't think that's something that we should expect from a high-range uh, drivetrain. So, if you want something that works like a native drivetrain, buy a native drivetrain. The second thing to expect is to expect problems. After all, you are going out of spec on your derailleurs, so uh, those are devices that are actually built towards a very specific uh, cassette they are supposed to work with. This is especially true with the modern derailleurs. 
This was always true, but now with the single pivot design being the dominant one, this is a very true. And uh, if a derailleur is meant for a cassette that is 1142, for example, trying to force it to 1150 or 1152 might work or might not. You could see that the uh, uh, formal spec for 1142 Dior handled the 1152 like a, like a boss, but the 1142 spec sensor failed at it. So there you go. Number three. Don't expect the hanger extenders to fix your issue, because after all you could see that the sensor derailleur actually worked better with the uh, hanger extender installed, because now it could climb the extended cassette without an issue, it just couldn't handle the extended range of this cassette. Uh, the Shimano derailleur uh, failed spectacularly, because not only the big gap got increased, so shifting got sloppier, but the chain wrap capacity of the derailleur got lowered, so not only it couldn't uh, handle the gear shifting, but it also couldn't handle the range. Without the extender, the sh Shimano derailleur actually worked very well. And number four, don't trust the sellers on AliExpress, because they either don't know what they're selling, or, uh, well, they will lie to you without uh, hesitation. So, have that in mind. Alright then, I think that's about everything I have to say about this topic, at least at this point, because knowing myself I will have a very strong opinion to the contrary tomorrow, and I will obviously um, going to be trying different combinations with the cassette and, uh, and the derailleur and the extender and god knows what else. But for now that's about everything. If you liked uh, the content of what you just saw, consider subscribing to the channel and Thank you for your undivided attention and see you on the next one.